Welcome, my name is Harrison with Handleworks and today we are gonna go over the Kilowatt app and how to use it with a Handleworks product. I got my camera, I got my phone, I got a bike. I got Max behind the camera yelling at me. What's up? Let's do this thing. So as a quick intro first, Kilowatt is a third party app. It's not owned by us, it's actually made by my buddy Derek. Um, and he's made a really powerful app initially for tuning Surons, but it works with all BACs. So we've been able to use it with all of our products. Kilowatt's actually really powerful um, and it gives you a lot of functionality and a lot of things you can change. But since we're handling most of the flashing for you, you don't actually need to do too much with Kilowatt. So we're just gonna go through how to use it and all of the things that you'll generally use it for with a Handleworks product. Um, but there's a lot more functionality that maybe you don't need. Okay, first up is how to download and install Kilowatt. We're gonna do it on my iPhone. I've removed it from my phone. We're gonna go to get.kilowatt.bike. On Androids, it's a lot more simple. Once you go there, it takes you straight to the Google Store. On iPhone, you need to download Test Flight first, and then you need to download Kilowatt. So we'll download Test Flight and install it. Okay, and then we'll go back to get We'll go back to the URL and then scroll down and this is where you're gonna get kilowatt inside test flight. We'll install that guy. All right, that's it. So in the bottom right, I've got test flight and kilowatt installed. Uh, so we can just go to kilowatt and connect to the bike, All right? Yeah. So I'll turn on my bike and then I'll open kilowatt. <laughs> and then it'll take you through a quick tutorial, but this is the tutorial, so listen to me instead. So this is my Kilowatt homepage. Right now it's got zero vehicles because I just did a fresh install of this. So to add my bike, I'm gonna make sure it's on, and then I'll click add. Make sure you click e-bike. E-bike is the default name for any BAC. I don't wanna connect to any simulated controllers because those are used for debugging purposes. So I'll click e-bike. You can name it if you want. Uh, you can set which screen you want it to start on, but I'll just click add. And then it'll automatically create a backup. This is the first backup. I really like this feature because it means that it's gonna download exactly what's on your controller as soon as you connect to it. And we'll save that. So that way you can always revert back to that first backup. So in, in Kilowatt, it's actually pretty difficult to really mess anything up or destroy your controller. So if you ever screw around with the settings and you mess up, you can always revert back to your first backup. All right, and if you're gonna tune anything, change anything on your controller, you're gonna go to setup, and this is the bulk of what we're gonna go through. So now we're connected to the bike, and I'm in the screen for the controller, and I'm just gonna take you through the screens and talk about all of the different ways that we might use Kilowatt on a Handleworks product. Uh, again, since we do all the flashes for you, then you're not gonna actually use a lot of these other functions. So in the controller screen, diagnostic messages is one of the most important ones. That's just gonna tell us if there's anything wrong with the controller or if anything's happening, this will help debug. So inside diagnostic messages, it'll just tell us whatever error codes or faults might be coming up. Sometimes that's just normal operation. Other times if it sticks like this controller over voltage, it's something that maybe we need to look at. This controller over voltage exists right now because we've got this Z Miami and it's got a BAC 855 and it's got a 60 volt battery on there, but it's flashed as if it came straight from us. So it's flashed for a 48 volt battery. So just to demo the reflashing process, we're gonna update this to a 60 volt flash. So right now it's got a controller over voltage because it sees 60 volts, but it's tuned for 48 volts. We're gonna do the whole gamut. So I'm gonna go to my browser, I'm gonna type in members page for Handleworks. This is where we keep all of our flashes. I'm actually in the middle of redoing all of this right now, but this is what it looks like right now, and the logic is the same. You're just gonna go find your bike. This is a Z Miami. You're gonna find the flash that you want, and then you can download it. This is a direct download, so you just get to choose where it goes. So I've downloaded the flash to my phone. Now I'm gonna import it into Kilowatt. So I'll click Import Backup. Okay, I've scrolled endlessly. Now I've found my 60 volt flash that I just downloaded, so I click that. And then it imports here, right above my first backup. So this is essentially a list of everything that I import into this controller. It'll save it for me. And to upload it to the controller, I'm just gonna click the up button. So it's just uploaded. Uh, after the upload, you need to remember to click save. 
because this makes it save permanently to the controller. It is irreversible and that's what we want. I'll click yes, continue. If you don't click save, then it's not gonna actually save it for next time you turn this thing on. All right, settings saved. So now I've got this flash on this controller. So it's 60 volts and my diagnostic messages show nothing. No issues found. That's what we want. Okay, from here we're gonna just go through these screens and quickly just go over the different things that we might use kilowatt for. In this first screen in power, I actually don't think you need to use any of this. This is for tuning your controller to a different battery, but we're supporting all of the different batteries that you could put on your bike or that we recommend you put on your bike, so you don't really need it. Throttle's the first one. Throttle's kind of a doozy. I'm gonna go over quickly how to calibrate your throttle manually. So right next to throttle, there's a calibration wizard. I don't really wanna use that um, because the way that kilowatt works is it'll calibrate it for you. It'll go through this little magic piece, um, but it'll remove pedal assist. So if you wanna keep pedal assist, we're gonna be actually just manually calibrating the throttle. So this voltage readout that says 0.904906 volts, this is a live readout for my throttle right now. This is the voltage that my controller sees from my throttle. So if I push on the throttle, you see it goes up to 4.1 volts. So this live readout, this is what I wanna pay attention to if I'm manually calibrating like a different throttle. If I put a twist throttle on here, I need to make sure that it's calibrated to the throttle that I added. So. Our low voltage is, let's say, 0.904 volts. And fully depressed, our high voltage for throttles, 4.105. So to set those, we're gonna go into advanced throttle parameters. What did I say, 0.904? Yeah. Okay, so 0.910 is what it's set to. I'll go to 0.904 volts. And then full voltage was 4.105, right? Yep. So we'll do that. Uh, leave dead band voltage and leave undershoot voltage. Those are pretty safe settings. Wait for that to load and then make sure you click save every time you make an edit and you want to keep them. Please make sure your rear wheel is in the air after doing this. So this whole time, all of this is with the rear wheel in the air in case something accidentally makes this go. That would be bad if it were on the ground. So one note on pedal assist is everything that we put out has throttle and pedal assist. If you're in a place that, I don't know, maybe some people are getting these shipped overseas and you're only allowed to have pedals, then you can always choose pedal only and save that. And then last thing on the throttle page I wanna go over is ramp time. We tune these ramp times for the way that we like our bikes to feel, which is a little snappier, um, but some people definitely have a preference for like a slower response. So what ramp time means is when you push the throttle on and when you release the throttle, how fast it'll respond. So right now ramp time is tuned for 140 milliseconds and release time, after I release the throttle, it'll take only 50 milliseconds for the throttle or for the controller to respond. You can change these parameters. You can increase that if you want it to be a little more gradual. I can go up to 160, for example. Anytime I make a change, I'll just save it. Yeah, you can mess with it. If you lower it though, and you're like casually riding, I found with that like just really this tune mainly, when you're casually riding over bumps, the bumps will move your wrist just enough that your thumb moves, and then you'll press the throttle a little, and then the bike will kind of jolt forward, which will make your thumb go up, and then your bike will slow down, and then you yeah. then and then you start do, going, do, ooh, do, ooh, do. ooh, so very irritating. That's why it's kind of high. Usually it's set closer to like 100 or 80. Okay, next screen. Inside drivetrain, there's actually not too much for you to change. These are tuned specifically for these setups. So there's a lot of details in here, and I don't want to go over them because I don't want people to change those. This is what we spend most of our time doing. The only thing I'll say about field weakening here is uh, you can increase your field weakening if you want more top speed, uh, but we set it to as high as is safe on your motor. So I wouldn't really change it unless you really want to start pushing the envelope for yourself. The other part on drivetrain is temperature limits. So we're programming everything for the temp sensors inside these motors, and it'll automatically start pulling power once your motor starts getting hot. If you have a ton of issues with your power getting cut because your motor's getting hot too fast, you can change this bit where it says reduce power. Right now it's starting to reduce power at 100 degrees C. I would actually change it to earlier. So if you change it to earlier, it'll start reducing power and that'll be more gradual. So you'll actually feel less of it 
and then you'll be able to use your motor a little bit harder as a result. This ultimate power cutout, 115 degrees C, don't touch that. That is the ultimate highest temperature that your motor can get to before it starts damaging itself. So there's, there's a bunch of wires inside this motor and they're coated with something that keeps them waterproof, but above 115 degrees C, that coating is gonna start melting off and then they're no longer waterproof and then they're gonna start uh, shorting to themselves. My controller timed out. All right, moving over to controls. Inside controls, there's not a whole lot that we need to be changing here. Again, most of this is tuned already, but some customers have wanted to change their top speeds and their powers. Some people want all of their modes to be full power. Some people want mode two to be maybe a little bit slower. So the way that we change modes is everything from us gets programmed with three ride modes. So that's mode one, mode two, mode three. That left column is your power multiplier and that right column is your speed multiplier. So if you wanna change any of these things, then those are the ones that you're gonna edit. Say like, I want mode one to be a little bit more powerful, maybe I'll go up to 0.4. Or if I want my speed in mode two to be a little lower, I'll change that to 0.5. Double tap, 0.5. That's how we change our modes. So those are the only things you need inside controls is if you ever wanna change your power and speed multipliers, that's where that is. Okay, so then the last thing is the dyno. This is actually a really cool feature. We actually use this ourselves. Um, the dyno is essentially just data logging. So at the bottom, I have all of these metrics that I can turn on and off if I wanna see them. We just have everything on. So this is measuring all of these things. And then when I click record, I'll actually record what the bike is doing. So as I throttle it, <laughs> you'll see these things change. And it's sampling multiple times a second. So it's actually, it's really nice. And we use this just to see what the bike is doing. And you can always actually export this to a CSV. So I can stop recording and then I can click that download the file button and I can save that and I can open it up in Excel. If you know how to use that, I can see everything that that's doing. On very rare occasions, if we have no idea what's happening with your controller or your setup's doing something super weird, we might ask you to do data logging. And this is how you'll do that. Okay, and then finally, if I exit, go back to my vehicle, instead of clicking setup, I can click dash. This is a really neat feature that is added in here that's just everything that I might need to know for my bike. It'll show me ride modes, it'll show me my live speed, it'll show me my live power. A lot of these things are also on your display, but things like you know motor temperature at the top might just be useful to have. So you can always just put this on your handlebars and go ride with that on there. So that's pretty much everything you're gonna use Kilowatt for on a Handworks product. Uh, you can mess with a lot of these other features. There's not a huge risk of breaking anything, but most of this stuff is already tuned for you. So these are most of the things that you should be using Kilowatt for on one of our controllers. All right, hope that was helpful. Go build your e-bikes. All right, I really fucked this flash up, so can, can you revert it? <laughs>